Today's topic is comfort. And from Deuteronomy 32, verse 10, The Lord shielded him, cared for him, and guarded him as the apple of his eye. Never do we feel the hand of God more closely upon us than we remember the years of our past life. St. Augustine says that people were given the choice between dying and reliving their past life. They would surely choose death, seeing the great dangers and evils which they had so narrowly escaped. When considered rightly, this statement is very true. Here people may see how often they have done and suffered many things without effort or care of their own, yes, even without or against their own will. They gave little thought to them before they occurred or while they were happening. Only after all was over did they find themselves compelled to explain, exclaim in great surprise, how did these things happen to me when I gave no thought to them or thought something very different? This bears out the proverb, the human mind proposes, but God disposes. Proverbs 16, 9. That is, God turns things around and brings to pass something different from that which people had planned. Thus it is not possible for us to deny that our lives and actions are under the guidance, not of our own prudence, but of the wonderful power, wisdom, and goodness of God. Here we see how often God was with us when we neither saw nor sensed it. Therefore, even if there were no books or sermons, our own very lives, led through so many evils and dangers, would, if considered properly, abundantly commend to us the ever-present and most tender goodness of God which far beyond our thought and feeling carried us in its bosom. And that's from 14 Consolations found in Luther's works, volume 42. And now from Psalm 17, 8. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. The shadow of your wings in a mystical sense is faith in Christ, which in this life is mysterious and shadowy. But the wings of Christ are his hands stretched out on the cross. For just as the body of Christ on the cross produces a shadow, so it casts a spiritual shadow on the soul, namely faith in his cross, under which every saint is protected. Second, the shadow of the wings is the protection and watch of the holy angels, or of contemplative people, or of the wings of God, for in them he soars and dwells in an affectionate and encaptured mind. Third, the shadow of the wings is the learning of the scriptures, in which there is rest for those who devote themselves to this learning. Thus the bride says in Song of Solomon 2, 3, I sat down under his shadow whom I desired. And this is from his, Luther's first lectures on the Psalms, found in Luther's works, volume 10. And now from Psalm 43, verse 2, You are the most handsome of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. The poet has diligently read the prophecies and promises regarding Christ. He has seen that the Christ's lips are the sweetest and loveliest lips, which attracts the hearts of the weak. He does not call them simply gracious lips, but lips overflowing with grace, in order to point out that Christ is superabundant in his lips. From his mouth, as from some overflowing fountain, the richest promises and teachings stem, and with these he strengthens and comforts souls. Grace is on the lips of this king. Not only that, it overflows, so that you may understand how abundantly this fountain of grace flows and gushes forth. It is though, the psalmist said, our king has wisdom such as no one has, namely the sweetest and loveliest wisdom. He helps the penitent, comforts the afflicted, recalls the despairing, raises up the fallen and humiliated, justifies sinners, gives life to the dying. Christ himself says in Isaiah 50, verse 4, The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word the one that is weary. So mark this well. The tongue of Christ is not the kind that terrifies or hurts, except when he speaks to the proud and obstinate. This psalm speaks of the work that he exercises towards his own. Here nothing is heard but the voice of comfort for the lowly, the voice of joy, and the voice of the bridegroom. And that's from the commentary on Psalm 45 from Luther's works, volume 12. And now from Psalm 62. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Psalm 62, 8. Hope in God, for he will not let you down. Others laugh. Comfort and make promises, but do not pin your hopes on them. Do not depend on him, 
them for both their strength and their courage are uncertain. Strength fades, courage fails, God remains firm. In times of adversity and times of prosperity, therefore, you may depend on God. If you are lacking something, well, here is good advice. Pour out your heart before him. Voice your complaint freely and do not conceal anything from him. Regardless of what it is, just throw it in a pile before him as you open your heart completely to a good friend. He wants to hear it and he wants to give you his aid and counsel. Do not be bashful before him and do not think that what you ask is too big or too much. Come right out with it, even if all you have are bags full of need. Out with everything. God is greater and more able and more willing than all our transgressions. Do not dribble your requests before him. God is not a person whom you can overburden with your begging and asking. The more you ask, the happier he is to hear you. Only pour it all out. Do not dribble or drip it, for he will not dribble or drip it either, for he will flood you with a veritable deluge. God is a refuge for us, our hiding place. He and no one else. And that's from the commentary on the four Psalms of Comfort found in Luther's works, volume 14. And now as we close today from John 14, 1, do not let your hearts be troubled. Christ knows that if we want to remain his own and adhere to baptism, the sacrament, and the gospel, the devil will inevitably be our enemy, incessantly pressing us with all his might and contending for our body and soul. Even if God wards him off and prevents him from killing you in one day, he will nevertheless craftily and cunningly persist in trying at least to rob you of your courage and security. He will try to fill you with disquiet and sadness, and subsequently to bring you into other dangers and distress. Christ here wants to exhort and console us that we may be reconciled to our lot and not be too alarmed, or let the devil subdue us so easily and make us despair and lose courage. From these and similar words of Christ, we should learn to know that the Lord Christ aright, to develop a more cordial and comforting confidence in him. We are to learn to pay more regard to his word than anything else which may confront our eyes, ears, and other senses. For I, if I am a Christian and hold to him, I will always know that he is talking to me, here and elsewhere I learn that all his words are intended to comfort me. Yes, all he says, does, and thinks are nothing but friendly and consoling words and works. To this end, he promises to send his disciples and the Christians the Holy Spirit, whom he calls the Comforter. And that's from the Sermons on the Gospel of St. John, Volume 24 in Luther's Works. And now let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for your goodness and your patience for your comfort and gracious lord this is another aspect of being strong in our weakness knowing that you have the comfort that we need that only you can give may you help us retain our focus on you and elevate you above all other things and all other people in your holy name we pray amen have a blessed day